My name is Carrie Schuliger, and I live in North Vancouver, and I'm grateful to spend my days journeying with others as a spiritual director. It's good to be back worshiping with you today. In the last year, I've loved getting to know your community and am encouraged by the lived faith that I have witnessed in you. Maybe I've only met the best of you, but I doubt it. I trust that I have seen Christ reflected in the way that you live your faith together, partly due to the grace that God has given you and partly due to the faithful rhythms you keep. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, as we come and are with you today in your word, I pray that you would speak through the power of your Holy Spirit. It is what we need. We place ourselves in front of you this morning. Lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, I have been asked to offer a practice followed by a teaching. So we'll enter our scripture through an imaginative prayer practice. It's a way of engaging with scripture that invites you to enter the narrative with your imagination. And it leads you to an encounter with Jesus. You might consider adding this to your rhythm of life this year. It might be a way to deepen your experience of your community's walk through the Gospel of Luke. If Ignatian contemplation is familiar to you, then you're likely hoping I stop talking and get to the story. However, if this is a new way of engaging with scripture, then I'd like to say a few things. One, we enter this contemplative practice trusting that God is with us and can lead us as surely through our imagination as he can through our minds. Two, we acknowledge that we are story-formed people of faith and that God has purposefully chosen to reveal himself in the scriptures through story. And three, we trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to guide our imaginations and emotions to help us attend to what the good news is for us today. So as we begin this contemplative practice, I invite you to trust what you notice about the details, the sights, the sounds, the smells, and to pay close attention to what the people are doing and not doing, what they're saying, what they're not saying in the narrative. And stay awake to the things that attract you about the story but maybe even more importantly, stay awake to the things that you resist in the story that repel you. And finally, we'll spend some time imagining being with Jesus in light of what he has revealed through this practice. What he's revealed about us, what he's revealed about himself, and what he's revealed about his kingdom. In this practice, we let the story read us. We ask Jesus what he wants us to pay attention to, even if it's not the main point. And since your congregation is slowly walking through the Gospel of Luke, I've chosen the story of a group of friends who take a sick friend to Jesus for this morning's prayer. Perhaps you remember Preston's inspired sermon on this passage entitled Through the Roof, last May 2021. With contemplation, Repetition is actually helpful, so if you've engaged in this passage with your mind, if you've studied it, returning to it with your imagination can deepen your experience. You can find this story in Luke 5, verses 17 to 26, and you may want to turn there in your Bible or your Bible app and follow along as I read. Again, it's Luke 5, 17 to 26. One more thought that Kevin O'Brien says better than I could. He wrote The Ignatian Adventure, a book that guides people prayerfully through the Ignatian imagination practices. And he has some gracious words for all of us this morning. He wrote, pray as you are able. In a spirit of generosity, pray as you are able. Don't try to force it. Rest assured that God will speak to you, whether through your memory, understanding, intellect, emotion, or imagination. So for today's passage, I will read the passage two times with pauses after each reading and guide you through with questions. So now, 
If you're game, I invite you to close your eyes and take three deep breaths in the awareness of Christ with you and his Holy Spirit at the ready to guide you. Now keep your eyes closed and listen to this story and imagine yourself in the narrative. Pay attention to where you find yourself. A person in the crowd, a disciple, a Pharisee, one of the friends, the one on the mat, Jesus, or hovering above as an observer or narrator. Just notice where you find yourself in the story without judgment. Luke 5. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee, from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord with, was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy, who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. I'll pause here for a minute for you to reflect on where you found yourself in the story. Maybe it surprises you or maybe it makes sense. What might God be revealing to you in this? Now, if you didn't find yourself in the story, no problem. Just consider what drew your attention. And just think most about that in the next minute. I'll break the silence with amen. Amen. Now I invite you to keep your eyes closed and listen again to this passage. And like watching a good movie for a second time, notice the details that capture your attention in the second reading. Actions or dialogue, sights or sound or feels. Trusting that God will show you even more in this story, in the second reading, as it speaks to your life today. Luke 5. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, take your mat, get up, and go home. Immediately he stood up from in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Take another moment here to explore what emotions you are aware of as you contemplate the details you noticed. How are the things that you noticed connected to your moment, to your life, and to your life with God? I'll pause again here and close with amen. Amen. Again, keeping your eyes closed, I invite you to return to the scene, but this time as yourself. And as much as you are able in your imagination, get yourself through the crowd and into the house with Jesus. Be courageous and get yourself right in front of Jesus and look him in the eyes. Let him look at you with love. Bring what you noticed to him. Tell him where you found yourself in the story, how you feel about it, what you noticed, and then pause and listen. I'll give you another minute here to be with Jesus. And again, I'll close the time with amen. Amen. Now pray with me. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence with us in and through your living word. Amen. You can open your eyes now. Thank you. Thank you for leaning into this contemplative practice. Now, before I offer my reflections on this passage, if you'd like to add this kind of imaginative contemplation to your rhythms of of life this year. I'll just say quickly, my favorite resource is called Pray As You Go. And in addition to many Lexio Divina exercises, there are actually six guided gospel exercises to get you started. Now, I don't think this practice is actually something new. In fact, I think it's quite old. Embedded in the way we were made embedded into the way that God has chosen to reveal himself to us. I believe that we engage our imaginations pretty naturally as children. And as adults, most of us watch a movie or read a good novel and find ourselves in the story. Over the Christmas holiday, our family went to an actual movie theater and saw Spider-Man No Way Home. 
I won't give any spoilers, but I found myself identifying pretty strongly with one of the characters. And it actually helped me identify some things that God was inviting me to get curious about in my own life. And if you've seen the movie, if you've seen the movie, you can ask me later. At another point over the Christmas holiday, our family had the joy of attending Pacific Theater's Christmas Presents. It was our first time at this unique Christmas event. It was a beautiful weaving of music and story, and I was profoundly moved and held by a few of the stories. I laughed at a song that told the story of doing Christmas dishes with four generations, and I felt like crying when someone told a story about the cold wind cutting through the coat of an old woman on her way to church on Christmas Eve. My husband and I recently commented that that one night made this year's Advent meaningful. We'll be adding that to our annual rule of life. Stories stick. Stories stay with us. They break our barriers. They break our hearts. They capture our imaginations. You know this. Now, Luke could have communicated the good news of our passage today in a matter-of-fact way. If he had, it might read something like this. Here is the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus can heal. Faith matters. Faith-filled friends matter. Jesus can read your mind. <laughs> and he can forgive sins. Worship this remarkable God-man. That's good stuff. But what I know of Jesus is that the way is as important as the what. And the way that God chooses to reveal the what of his love was through the incarnation. This way of Jesus walking and talking and healing, left us with, he left us with stories, beautiful stories, to return to, to contemplate. Preston called this story in Luke 5 a classic gospel story. He said, it's classic Jesus. He said, it's got a crowd, expectation, suspense, surprise, restoration, worship, and conflict, with Jesus at the center, taking care of an outcast. As I have contemplated this classic story of Jesus this week, I found myself surprisingly on the mat. This week, this story revealed my need for forgiveness, for attention from Jesus, and for healing it feels like grace for Jesus to reveal that I'm on the map this week, this season perhaps. And I have given some space to ponder the places in my life in which I'm lame. I can't walk. And it's been a sweet gift, a hard one, but a sweet one, to be seen and known and loved by Jesus through this story in this way. And... Surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, I had a friend text me this week who was somehow able to read that I was on the mat through my responses. She's busting through the roof this week for me in prayer. That's remarkable and praiseworthy. I asked my husband Jeff where he imagined himself to be in this story, and he went away to consider it. He came back and said that he was actually the owner of the house, and he's pretty grumpy about having his roof wrecked. <laughs> then I said, okay, wow, I hadn't even thought about that character in the story. So of course, I asked the next question, I am a spiritual director. <laughs> so what happens if you imagine taking that feeling of grumpiness to Jesus? He kind of sighed in a grumpy way, but played along and paused to see what that might do. Then he said, well, when I imagined going to Jesus with my grumpiness, I felt grateful. It softened me. Grumpy, but grateful for what was happening in my house. And last night, I initiated a prayer meeting with my sisters and mom because my dad is having heart valve replacement surgery tomorrow. And we played with this exercise, and my mom said, oh, I'm on the roof tearing up the tiles. I'm doing whatever it takes to get the one I love to Jesus. Then I said, you know, you're going to have to deal with the grumpy homeowner. <laughs> and she said she didn't care and that she knew a guy named Justin who could fix the roof no problem. <laughs> Stories are so expansive that I know that I can be tearing up the tiles with my mom 
to get my dad to Jesus and at the same time be on the mat myself. Our God is limitless. His love has no boundaries. He's dying to have you know that. Our God is limitless. His love has no boundaries. He's dying that you would know that. Actually, he died so that you would know that and so that you would find yourself in his story. And that is good news. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your invitation into your story. Reveal your love to us through the Holy Spirit as we love you back with our minds, our hearts, and our imaginations. Amen.